Okay, so today I'm ready to start grinding, um, fine grinding my mirror. And uh, the mirror I've got here is the this uh, uh, Pyrex, uh, it'll be a uh, Cassegrain primary mirror. And I've got my penny lap made, made up with a plaster and some used pennies. Um, and so, um, the thing we want to accomplish in fine grinding is to, one, is to clean up the subsurface damage and bring the surface up to a polishable surface. And the second thing we want to do is to control the radius. And the third thing is to make sure we, we control the wedge. And now the wedge should be largely taken care of in, in generating, but uh, there's a small amount of wedge possibly, especially in lenses, it's necessary to, to, to clean up a little bit of wedge. So for fine grinding, we need grit. And grit comes in either mesh sizes or in micron sizes. I don't know if you can see this, this uh, chart here. Um, and uh, the grit I use is uh, aluminum oxide from Universal Photonics. And uh, depending on how coarse you generated your, your part with, uh, will, will determine where, what grid of uh, what what grade of grit that you'll need to start with. Um, now this this part was generated on a machine with a 120 micron diamond, so um, I'm going to start with 40. This is typically what I use over here. I use 40, 20, and 9 micron. Um, but if this would had been generated with 80 grit or something, I'd probably want to use 120 before going to 40 grit. Or e even coarser is, is 50 or 60, and then you want to go to 80 and then 120. But for the most part, um, 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 I just about always start with 40 micron. And um, so that's where I'll start. Um, the, um, The first thing before you want to start, though, is uh, you want to be sure that your part is spherical, and, and hopefully you've taken care of that in generating. But if you're not sure, one of the things you can do to check is, is do the, the pencil test or magic marker te test. Just make some marks across your, your mirror or lens or whatever it is uh, before you start grinding and see, make sure that it's, it cleans up. Um, so, uh, I've got some not, uh, 40 micron grit here. It settles out very quickly, so you always got to keep it mixed up. And I uh, use old mustard bottles for for, for that. Um, about, I use about a 50-50 water grit mixture. And, and then, uh, since the, my pennies are on the bottom, we want to use a little bit of um, soapy water too, and I'll show you. First, we're going to pour out a little bit of grit here, and it looks like it's actually a little stronger than 50-50, but I'll simply add some some water, and I've got a little bit of water here that I've got uh, maybe two or three drops of detergent added to 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 make it uh, to make it bubble. The reason I do that is because when I put Put this on, and move it around. I get bubbles, and the bubbles help keep the grid in suspension. Um, especially if the lap is on the bottom, the part on top, the, the grit would settle out and it wouldn't be between the pennies and the part. So the bubbles help keep it in suspension. And so, so I start developing some, some bubbles here. Quickly develop if you see them there. So. Um, uh, you want to do a nice W stroke, like so. Do that. And then rotate the part. You want to rotate the part a lot. And then just keep rotating. If I was working on a barrel, I could walk around the barrel and do this. But I'm, I'm working on the countertop, so I can't do that. 
Actually, I'll probably do this part by machine and then uh, that's completely different thing. Okay, so I only worked it for a few few minutes there. You can see that my pencil marker or magic marker mark is just about all gone. It's all nice and even, and it's it's worked it's worked uh, even. That, that means that I'm, I've got a good sphere here and good contact. If it, if it was only um, if you only saw part of the the, the magic marker, uh, that means your part would be too very spherical. Um, and it might be it might pay to go back at that point and and clean it up better, make it more spherical with the, the coarser grit than and the finer grits. Um, so that's uh, that's the process. You can you can hear it working with these the bowls in there. It will you can hear, hear the noise it's making. If it's making that noise, it's, it's working. And this one session of uh, grit that I got on here will probably last at least three to five minutes. You can see it starts to get darker as, as the zinc and the penny starts wearing, wearing off. It's darker. Now you want to rotate your uh, tool fairly frequently, so um, and if your part was on the bottom, you would want to rotate it very often because you don't want to develop uh, astigmatism um, from um, from being worked. Now eventually the you'll start uh, you won't you won't hear that noise. It'll get quieter and quieter. It means your grit has, has been used up. This is really actually a pretty efficient use of grit with, with the uh, use of pennies and, and the way I'm doing it here. But eventually it, it uh, noise quiets down and the grit has been spent. So then you want to clean up clean up your work. marker is completely gone so um, and I can also tell that it, uh, you can look at your pennies and see what how good a contact is and actually I just got about every penny in contact here so that's a that's a good tool to use if you didn't get only you know if you had a lot of pennies that weren't um, in contact you might want to reconsider remaking your tool or something that's why I like pitch because you can actually press it to press it into contact and get very good contact Okay, let me clean up my tool too. And you can see I've got, got the um, bubble pack underneath it. Now, if this were a lens and the back side was, um, back side was uh, convex, kind of like this part is here, um, you would, have, you would need to be able to work it on the bottom because you have to. You need to alternate top to bottom to control the radius. When the part's on top, um, a concave part will always go steeper. If the uh, part is on top and it's convex, and you, and you work it on top, it will become less convex. It will be, become flatter. So you need to be able to switch it back and forth if, uh, to control the radius. Now, I don't care too much about the radius. This is this is a Newtonian or a Cassegrain primary, 
and it, the radius is not going to change enough for, to matter. But if you work into a lens prescription, you need, need to be very careful about control and radius. And um, uh, so, uh, if if you're if you need to put the part on the bottom, and the back side is is not flat, then you could possibly uh, cut a hole, uh, undersized hole, in your in your working board. Perhaps that's one way of doing it. Or you could also um, you could also just uh, set it on the um, the lap for the other side. Maybe you put a piece of paper or something underneath it, and then tape it around, and that'll be a good support to to work the the the, the side. The, um, that'll be a good way to support the part. So um, that's basically the process. Uh, you want to run it until you um, get the part cleaned up. And the way I like to check uh, whether or not that happened, and it's too early now to check it because it just started, uh, but, but I like to use a um, good LED uh, flashlight and um, examine the, the part with the flashlight just laying flat on the uh, flat on the surface. And um, pits and subsurface damage will show up um, as dots. Dots and dots that you can't uh, move with your finger. And um, I still see a lot of uh, grinder marks where, where this is uh, um, from, from the generator. But this is a very good way to ch check. You also want to use a, a magnifying glass and loop and look look real closely at the surface. But again, I, th this is too soon. You want to probably run um, you want to run your part uh, at least uh, uh, 15, 20 minutes on 40 micron to, to clean it up.